Let me ask you something. If you were an NFL general manager, would you draft Bryce Young? Locked on Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey again, everybody, and welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me, Jimmy Stein, that's him. Jimmy, it is mock draft season, and man, the mock draft... <laughs> That's apparently a season you enjoy as you throw your arms up in celebration. Um, and I'm seeing now, uh, we talked a little bit about this, about Anthony Richardson and how he uh, was the T-shirt champion of the world at the uh, Combine. But I, I still think Bryce Young is going to go number one no matter what happens, I, un unless Chicago keeps the pick, which nobody believes they're going to do. Um and I think they should draft him number one. I know Keyshawn Johnson uh, just came out with who he thinks are his five best quarterbacks in the draft. And he has Bryce number four, which tells me maybe he ought to go into concussion protocol low these many years after he's finished playing football. But um, I still believe Bryce Young should go number one. I believe he will go number one. And I'm leaning towards the Colts. Would you draft him number one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, I, I think they're all gambles. When people say, oh, Anthony Richardson is such a gamble, they're all gambles. I mean, the, the, the number one obvious pick has been bust in the past. But here's the thing about Bryce. You know, he has zero issues off the field. Zero. I mean, this is as close to a, 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 a as close to a perfect guy off the field in a face of the franchise you're going to get. Uh, uh, there's no drug issues this is not a uh there's no he won't understand the playbook situation he's as smart as the head coach the day he shows up uh incredibly bright guy uh is, is anybody question his work ethic no i mean there's one thing in the world to question and that is his size and can he play at that size and and will he have the durability that's necessary because you're making a four or five year investment with the first pick. I mean, there, there's a there's a big monetary investment. Uh, there's the hope that he's going to be your starting quarterback. You're building it around him. Uh, it, uh, size and durability. That's the the questions. And those are big questions. They're big questions. They they really are. But the way I, I'm looking at it right now, Luke, is it's not unprecedented that a quarterback his size would play in the NFL. Kyler Murray is a starting quarterback in the NFL right now that is extremely similarly sized to Bryce. I don't think anyone, people have complaints about Kyler Murray. People think that Kyler Murray maybe isn't worthy of his contract or worthy of being the number one pick, you know, four years ago, but no one starts their concerns with Kyler over, look, he's just too small. No one says that about him. They say stuff like he just doesn't study the playbook. He doesn't watch enough tape. He's not the leader we thought he would be. But no one looks at Kyler and says, you know, he's just too small. So that's why I think Bryce will be the number one pick. They're all gambles. Bryce is a gamble, too. Uh, I think Bryce is the best bet based on how he played at Alabama, the competition he played against at Alabama. I mean, the SEC leads the NFL in in, in – draftees by conference every single year, Bryce has already proven against these same guys he's going to be playing against on Sundays. Same guys. I know. You almost thought I was going to be on mute, and I was, but I caught it before I really started talking, so it doesn't count. I thought you were just contemplating all that wisdom I spewed <laughs> forth. Uh, I did just pull up something, because while you were talking, it just dawned on me. I bet you there's a website somewhere that has, like, all the heights of NFL players right now. And the best that I've been able to find, and this is from February of this year, it says uh, this is the How They Play website, which, or howtheyplay.com, which um, mm. never heard of it. But um, the it's scary 30, on the Internet if you do that search. It, it is. The 30 tallest players um, ever to play in the NFL. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, here's some names. Okay, I'm just throwing these out there. Trevor Lawrence at 6'6", six, six. Felipe Franks at 6'6", six, six. Jacob Eason at 6'6", six, six. Uh, Justin Herbert at 6'6", six, six. Jake 
Luton Lutton. I've never heard of him. He played at Oregon State, but apparently he also played in the NFL. Derek Anderson also at 6'6". Matt Blunden from a gazillion years ago. Um, Tyler Bray at 6'6". Uh, uh, I didn't know Joe Flacco was 6'6", but apparently he was. Um, my point is Josh Freeman, who didn't do much. I mean, he was a nice little college player, but he didn't do much. Ryan Mallett, who didn't do much in the pros. Sean Mannion. Uh, all these guys are 6'6". Brian McClure. Um, I, uh, here's one that that you'll know. Um, Jamarcus Russell. Uh, Matt Schaub. Uh, Nate Sudfield. I vaguely remember him. Logan Thomas. Mark Wilson. Scott Mitchell, who was okay. Sonny Gibbs. Mike Glennon, who flamed out. Paxton Lynch, who may be one of the most famous flameouts in recent history. Brock Osweiler. And Dan McGuire was 6'8". So, okay, here's my point. I know that was all from 6'6 six, six to 6'8", six, right? There are about four or five quarterbacks in there that are you would consider good, even just good. There may be two or three that you would consider, okay, they have a chance to be elite. Justin Herbert, um, Joe Flacco was elite at one point. And then, of course, uh, pretty boy from Clemson, um, I shouldn't call him that because he can whip my butt. T Trevor Lawrence. Um, so, okay, those are the 30 tallest, so maybe that's a bad example. My, my point is you don't have to be a prototypical guy to, to right. be elite. You don't have to be. And you're right. You're going to give something on – everything has a yin and a yang. I'm a big believer in the universe sort of averaging out. Uh, but if – so if you're going to take Bryce Young and say, okay, here's Bryce Young. He's a guy who's got elite talent. He played in an elite uh, conference against elite competition, against uh, the best defense in the country uh, in 2021 and played really well both times. He didn't have both his weapons in the second game or they probably beat him both times. Um, what many people thought was a generational defense. He played with elite talent, which I think there's a plus to that too. Um, he comes from California – uh, where he was a five-star, so he's dealt with the limelight for God knows how long. He's also dealt with being on the bench, which he was behind Mac Jones, so he knows what it's like to learn versus coming in and just being handed the keys to the Corvette. There's a positive to both sides of that. Um, he is not a problem off the field, as you mentioned. In fact, it's the opposite. He is a He has an aura about him that is undeniable. When he won his Heisman Trophy, I said it looked like – Prince up there getting a Grammy. I mean, he just walked up there and he was the coolest person on the stage full of cool people. It was like when uh, Eric Clapton was asked, what's it like being the greatest guitar player? And he said, I don't know. You'd have to ask Prince. And that when the cool people think you're cool, like they follow you, you're the leader of leaders. That's Bryce Young. And okay. So you take all that stuff in together, all that stuff together. And then you say, okay, so what's the negative? The negative is he's five, 10 and one eighth. Okay, so if you're telling me if he was 5'11", that he's worth that much more, it, it's just it doesn't make sense when all these other positives don't outweigh this negative. They just don't. And so if you're going to fall into a trap about Will Levis, who obviously has a, has a great arm, or, or Anthony Richardson, who is obviously a freak of nature, um, you remember that old track and field game that used to be like in all the pizza joints where you had to like punch the buttons real, real fast and like you could, you know, do long jump or whatever. That's Anthony Richardson. He's, he's a cheat code physically, but can he hit the broadside of a barn? That's that's can he hit the ocean from the boat? That's a problem. All right, Jimmy, let's take a break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about, um, you know, all these, all this quarterback situation, because I love, I love the draft. I, I do. I hope other people do too. We're obviously going to talk about it a lot on Locked On. We're also going to get into just the Alabama quarterbacks uh, situation right now, because I mean, frankly, Bryce is gone. So we got to deal with uh, what's next. But right now, I want to tell you about FanDuel. We're at the midway point of the NBA season. It's here, it's now, and it's time the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get that no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back. If your bet doesn't win, just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's so easy. Go do it on your Android mobile device, your iPhone mobile device, whatever it is. You got your flip phone, your jitterbug. You can get it 
uh, I think one's jitter bug. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores to threes drained, whatever you want. You can do all this in a big parlay if you want to. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets uh, any way you want to. That's just awesome. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on. Fanduel.com slash locked on. Go there. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Also checked out, check out, I did check it out, Locked On College Basketball, um, great time of year in college basketball, and we're going to be talking about it a lot more this week. I mean, it's not necessarily time to right this minute, but uh, we will be talking about it more this week. You can bet on that. I'm going to the SEC tournament. Can't wait to be there. Looking forward to it. Going to do some Locked On Nows after the games, so uh, pay attention to that. Pay attention to me, Jimmy. <laughs> Love me. I'm paying attention. I'm paying attention. I, I never stopped, I never stopped paying attention to you when you started the whole show you started the whole show with let me ask you a question I started talking back to you even though my microphone is muted during that time I thought you were literally talking to me oh that is true I bet you did start that's I funny like, nobody can see you talk when you're muted no so you, you said let me ask you a question I said fire away <laughs> all right so let's talk a little bit more about this draft for a second because all right on the off chance the Bears keep the pick, which I don't think they will, okay? I don't think they will. But it is interesting now with the Brandon Miller thing that's happened. Mm -hmm. uh, you juxtapose that with uh, Bryce Young, who we have talked about is like – I don't even know how you can – you can be a better person off the field without being over the top. You know, like Tim Tebow was so good that people were like, this is kind of strange. He's so perfect. Like, this is odd. And it, I think it that bore out that like, okay, he's almost too good to really probably flourish in the NFL. You have to have a, a bit of swagger about you too. And, and Tim Tebow is a fabulous athlete and a fabulous human being. We should all aspire to be Tim Tebow without actually being Tim Tebow. Does that make some sense? Because I think you, you, it's hard to trust somebody who's never screwed up at all. And I'm not sure Tim Tebow's ever screwed up. <laughs> you talking about that guy that's married to Miss Universe? Yeah, the guy who's married, the guy who was a virgin until he was married to Miss Universe. That's <laughs> that's practically impossible. But anyway, um, anyway, Bryce Young, super good. Brandon Miller, super good dude by all accounts. And I know there's some people listening to this who like to listen to it out of Bama hate. And they're like, yeah, but he was involved in a murder. Again, y'all are taking this way too far. I'm still seeing the Twitter uh, rants about him and Clay Travis's and whatever. And I'm like, okay. I mean, but I, I think y'all are stretching this too far and not paying attention. Or Jalen Carter. Jalen Carter now tied up in all the stuff at Georgia where it might not be directly tied into it, but his name's associated with it. So it's going to cost him a spot or two. Now, <clears throat> when it comes to Brandon Miller, I don't know that it's going to cost him a spot or two in the draft because that that freakazoid who's seven foot five out of France was going to go number one. And then Scoot right. Henderson was probably going to go number two. Right. And so – by the time Brandon it gets to Brandon Miller at three, I think some of the pressure's off. I think that because right. Brandon Miller's good enough to be number three. But when you're talking about the number one pick, I think that you you can't take Jalen Carter right now. So while some people may believe Jalen Carter is the best prospect in the draft, and and some people do, I think that the good news for Alabama is it's either going to be Bryce Young or Will Anderson at one. Don't you? Uh, I, I, I'm a I don't want to say 100% sure because the Bears could end up keeping the, the pick. And if the Bears do, it's, you know, they're going to take Jalen Carter or Will Anderson. They'll take but Will. I, I, They'll think take Will take, right? I think they would take Will. I, I believe they would because of, but, but regardless of that, I, I believe the Bears are going to deal the pick. Uh, I think they're going to deal the pick to either the Texans, likely the Colts. And uh, I think the Colts are going to select Bryce Young. Uh, I've, I've kind of been saying that for a long time now. Nothing that's happened in the combine or in anything that's happened at this point has changed my mind. I think Bryce will go number one. I think the Texans will then take C.J. Stroud at number two. Uh, and then uh, the Cardinals pick at three. Uh, and what's interesting to me is I believe – this is crazy, but this is what I believe now. I think the Cardinals will end up trading back because someone's going to trade up to three and take Richardson. And I think that will be Bryce, Stroud – Richardson, the Bears then pick at four because they trade down with the Colts, and the Bears will take probably Will Anderson. Yeah, I, I think that they, I think that the trade is the most likely scenario. 
obviously. And I would love to see, frankly, Bryce in Indianapolis because I think they'd fall in love with him, and I think that that'd be fun. Uh, and now some of these quarterback pieces are starting to fall into place for the NFL where Derek Carr's going to uh, the Saints, which is, okay, it's interesting. I, I'm, I'm not here to say if that's bad or not because he's got a, he's got the arm talent. He's got some receivers. He's got Alave and – I guess Michael Thomas will still be there, right? Much better defense. He's much got a better much defense. better defense in New Orleans than he had hey, in Vegas. Easier, easier division. Oh, yeah. He just left. He just left the division where his other quarterbacks he was playing against every week, really, were Herbert, Mahomes, and Russell Wilson. Yeah. Now he's gone into the NFC South where currently he's the best quarterback by miles and miles and miles <laughs> currently. Um. You know, I don't know where else. I, I guess Bryce going to Houston is so interesting to me. I mean, like the we we haven't spoken enough. It would be fun too. It'd yeah, it fun. could be fun. Well, D'Amico Rons because D'Amico like and now, Mechie and Mechie. But how about this? I really do find it interesting, and and I don't know why people aren't talking about this more. Lovey Smith, who coached the Bears to a Super Bowl season that lost to the Colts. Uh, ironically, because they made trade to the Colts to get the number one pick. They lost to the Colts. He was then coaching the Houston Texans last year. Wins on purpose, which sounds stupid, but that's exactly what happened against the Colts. He goes for two only to screw over the Houston Texans so that they get the number two pick versus the number one pick, who the number one pick is now the Chicago Bears, who he used to coach. That's kind of interesting. It's super interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah, and and it just goes to show how all the talk about tanking for this guy or tanking. No one, no one tanks. You have to remember that the NFL players. There's 53 of them on the team. They're all being evaluated to be paid week to week to week to week. They're not just going to agree to to look to put bad play purpose because now they're submarining their own careers. I mean, you got 53 different careers going on on a team. You also have a head coach and, you know, and who's also evaluated on wins and losses. Uh, I, I just never believe it. There's just too many competitors on the field to do that sort of thing. Now, you can tank by intentionally having a roster that's not good enough to win. That Now, that might happen. I can see that. But in terms of the players in the NFL, pro football players, you're, you're going to get max effort. Yeah, but – there is almost like reverse tanking. It's tanking – is winning unintentionally? I mean, <laughs> Lovey Smith was trying to make it so the Houston Texans were so bad they couldn't even get the first pick, and that's exactly what he did. <laughs> well, it makes it fun. It makes it fun for it sure, fun. And, and, and the end result is fun. Well, yeah, we I, want I, – I just think every team – I'll tell you this again. I would be really cool with Bryce Young in Houston. I'd be really cool with him in Indianapolis. Regardless, it looks like he's going to be in that division. Um, you know, obviously, uh, Indianapolis is where he played a national championship game. And Houston, I mean, he did – he played in Texas twice in his career. He played against a and in that loss, and then he played against Texas last year in Austin. Um in the, in the win against the Texas Longhorns. All right, Jimmy, let's take a break. When we come back, let's talk what the latest is with the Alabama current situation at quarterback. And we're back. So uh, Alabama right now, I, I think most people are beginning to come around to the idea of Ty Simpson being the quarterback. Is this is this what you think? Yeah, that this, that's, as we sit here two weeks before spring practice starts, if we're guessing, okay, who's going to be Alabama's quarterback in 2023? My answer is Ty. Uh, that that that's my guess. Uh, now, where I'm a little different than some uh, some of you that are listening is I, I don't believe it's Ty because Milrow's not any good. I, I, I don't believe that at all. As a matter of fact, I think Jalen Milrow is going to be improved. Uh, I think he's going to be a quarterback you can win with. I think he would be a winning quarterback at Alabama. Uh, I, I really, when I'm saying I think it's going to be Ty, I, I'm 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 complimenting Ty. I, I think Ty is too good. I think Ty will just win the job because he's too good. I, I would even go so far as to say there's Jalen and then there's Tua and then there's Mac and then there's Bryce and now there's Ty. That, that's how good I think Simpsons is. And he's going to just fit in that, that 
the, the streak continues. Uh, now, now, you know, could Alabama win with Milrow? I believe so. I think it's going to be tough to, to beat Milrow out, Frank. Here, here's what's kind of funny. I mean, we're just talking about the quarterback, you know, thing in the NFL. And, you know, Milrow's a little like Richardson. I mean, in terms of like unbelievable physical talent, a uh, great kid, great leader, smart guy. But there is a small but questionable track record as a passer. You can question what Milro has looked like in the games so far as a passer, just like people are questioning Anthony Richardson in the NFL. Whereas Ty, to me, even though he hasn't played in college football, I think Ty's a little more Bryce, probably a little bit better bet. I mean, what's the knock on Ty? Ty's not even small like Bryce. Uh, he's typical quarterback sized. He's got a great arm. He's a polished passer. He's a student of the game. He's a coach's kid. Uh, you just add all that up. And just like I'm saying, Bryce is the best bet for an NFL general. Man, Ty's the best bet at Alabama because every box is checked. You don't even have the size issue with him. He just hasn't played. But you know what? Milro have not played a ton either. He does have a start. He did win the game at Arkansas. Those are significant things. That's why when practice starts 13 days from now, when we take, when practice starts, practice one, game one, snap one, it's going to be Jalen Milrow, you know, with the first team. He's played. He's won. He will be the first team guy at the first practice, the first snap. And Ty's job is to beat him out. I think Ty will beat him out. When? I, I, you know, prior to A-Day, maybe. I mean, A-Day is interesting, Luke. I mean, A-Day – there won't be an announcement as to who is going to be Alabama's starting quarterback against Middle Tennessee, but it is an announcement of sorts because the white team on a day features the first team offense. Who's going to be the quarterback with the first team offense on a day? Is it going to be Jalen? And what I'm telling you is regardless of which one it is, if it's Milrow, I don't think it means a lot because Ty still has plenty of time and opportunity to beat him out. If it's Ty, to me it means quite a bit because it shows that Ty started out behind Jalen and has moved ahead of him. Yeah, and look, that boy, the only thing that scares me a little bit is I just – I don't want to see either one of these guys transfer. I really hope this sort of becomes, a, a at least for a year, a Tua and Jalen Hurts situation where it was clear – everybody knew Tua was the guy. But Jalen hung around, and by God, we needed Jalen like you wouldn't believe in that SEC title game, and and he became a legend. I mean, that's – frankly, I wonder how Alabama fans would view Jalen Hurts right now without that 2018 season where he – um, you know, he came in and saved the day against Georgia in the SEC title game. I know we went on and lost the national championship game and, and really, and sadly, in impressive fashion for Clemson. But that game, that's one of my favorite games of all time in Alabama history. I mean, I, I can name a bunch of great games, but if you're telling me, Luke, name your top three games, especially games I went to, and I've been to the 92 SEC title game, the, the 92 Miami National Championship, the, the two uh, second and 26, I've been to all those games. I'm putting that SEC title game 2018 in the top five of games I've ever been to. Yeah. And – it's it's definitely in there. I don't know exactly where I'm going to put it, but it'd be interesting to know. You know that only happens because Jalen hung around and and he stayed because he's he's built different. So I'm not saying that Jalen Milrow is Jalen Hurts. I'm just saying, wouldn't it be something if history repeated itself? Want me to send share? Here, here, here here's a story or a hypothetical. Here's a hypothetical that will give uh, Luke. I actually put both of us on the screen because I want to see your reaction to this. I, I want to see your reaction to this hypothetical. So put both of us up there. Okay, here we I'm go. I'm here. Uh, I'd like to give you the spotlight. You know. Nah, well, I appreciate that, but I want to see your reaction to this. Okay. So Jalen starts out number one on day one, but over the course of the spring, Ty's so good that Ty just moves ahead of Jalen. And while Nick Saban never says anything publicly, Ty is the quarterback on the white team. So all of us, all the people who really know what's going on, which means me and you and everybody that listens to the show, they're all like, wow, Ty's the number one quarterback. He's number one of the white team on, on uh, A-Day. So Jalen Milrow, he figures all this stuff out. And 
half of Alabama's fans are so excited about Ty and they've already given up on Milrow, they could care less when Milrow enters the portal the day after a day's over or the first day you can enter. But uh, Milrow goes in the portal day one and half of Alabama fans like don't even care because they don't think that Milrow's good. And Milrow hops in the portal and goes to Auburn. No, 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 no. That's why I don't want that to happen either. You I don't want reaction. Full of Alabama fans that don't think Milrow's good. I don't want to play against him at Auburn. I don't Here's want him over reaction, there. Jimmy. Here's my reaction to that. <laughs> I hope that it did that. Did that have the, the stress effect? Turn. I hope it did. It's, it's like know, a stress a stress turn, <laughs> or you were turning off the show, or <laughs> I really. I really did thought that I thought that chair turn was going to be more dramatic, and it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. And that's it my wasn't dramatic. It wasn't it dramatic, but it, it was. Uh, I knew there would be a reaction to that. I can't believe that I haven't really considered it. But the fact of the matter is, Auburn is probably sitting back, waiting to see who's and all the oh. focus is who's going to lose the QB battle in Athens, who's going to lose the QB battle in Columbus, Ohio. Do I want to play? And Bill Rose is a good fit over there with what Hugh Freeze does with his offense. Yes. Do let me tell you something, Jimmy. If you want to, okay. Now, my tummy hurts because you have made me think about Jalen Milrow facing off against <laughs> Alabama in 2023 in Jordan Hare Stadium. In, Auburn in Jordan Hare. Seven, yeah, Auburn is seven and four. We're undefeated, and the crowd is geeked up eight ways to Sunday. And Jalen Milrow just passes all over our butts. Oh, all right. I'm not talking about it anymore. That's the end of the podcast. You have ruined the I'm going to say, look, I don't think that's not going to happen. This is what's going to happen. I know this it's not going to happen. Ty and Jalen are going to leave the spring 1A and 1B, and, and the competition will continue in the fall. I think Ty eventually wins the job because Ty's too good to keep off the field. But hopefully Jalen Milrow will be Alabama's starter or – Number two this fall, I don't want him going anywhere. I, I think Milrow has a chance to be a fantastic college quarterback. That's why I don't want him at Auburn. Well, listen, yeah, I know that's not going to happen. I also didn't think Ms. Universe would marry a virgin. So a lot of things that I didn't think would happen have happened. So, all right, let's, let's, let's end the show with that. All right, we'll be back tomorrow, guys. Thank you guys for listening. Be sure to subscribe. We appreciate you guys a ton. Roll Tide. Roll Tide.